This video is brought to you by Pixelview, a streaming solution for post-production. Last year, I challenged my 1000 plus editing students from the GoToEditor course. Submit your scene work for a chance to edit a real feature film with a half a million dollar budget. No pressure. Not even 40 students submitted, with 12 moving on to the next round. What an opportunity, what great odds. Now, those lucky 12 had two weeks to cut a scene from the actual film and present it. Ultimately, the director team, Tim and Frankie, did the unthinkable. They hired three editors who have never cut a feature film to work together on this project. But each one of them was living in a different country. This is their story and how they cut their first feature film completely remotely and what you can do to do the same. Because if you stick around until the end of the video, you get the chance to join me on a free live webinar where I will show how you can break into the film industry and hear about our upcoming editing challenges. You know, some piranhas are vegetarians. <laughs> it's nice to really know your editor loves your movie. You can tell. You just can. They'll go above and beyond the Call of Duty. Now these guys have all gone above and beyond the call of duty for us. Whatever flaws there are in an indie film, you guys were able to completely sell it. I assume it wasn't quite that film in the dailies. We have one particular scene that I cut. I could not make it work. They just lost Frankie's girlfriend, which is Mario, the bar owner's daughter. You would think the scene would be very carefully shot. Unfortunately, we had essentially like one big wide and then a close up that every time they would turn to someone and they'd be in the middle of the line, the crew would ask them to repeat that line. Leslie and Diane. Reset that. His name is Brillo. Reset that line. Say that line one more time. Reset it. Ruining any sort of flow that was built up in the scene. I was struggling to hit the right person at the right moment because sometimes I just didn't have the shot that I wanted. And I was struggling to make it coherent. I was struggling to, to sell the scene that they are actually sad and not just playing sad. So I tried a bunch of different things. And at the end, I said, John, try and do something completely different. In the initial cut of the scene, story information was told and the plot was moved forward. So when I decided to recut the scene, I knew I had to watch everything. So I bumped everything good up to V2, bumped everything great up to V3. And from there, I just started refining my selects, color coding based on characters, and I eventually arrived at a first assembly. Michelle f***ing left me. Butch. You believe this shit? She took my Butch. TV, she took the f***ing kids, everything. I thought I got f***ing robbed. Right Butch! Now. What? Nicole's dead. You have to pull reactions from someone's face that's like saying something totally different or thinking about something, not even thinking about something at the time. And John gave me new ideas to, to what to do uh, about this scene. So we constantly kept like giving and taking from each other. John really set up the whole project. Before being an editor, he, he was an assistant editor for us. And we started just like devising, uh, not by scenes, but by reels. Okay, you're gonna do the first reel, I'm gonna do a second one. And that's how we decided to go along with it. So we used the, um, the newer Premiere productions, which kind of is similar to Avid's bin workflow. And in order to have that actually sync across all of our systems, we relied on Dropbox, which is not the way that one should do it, but because of the budget on the movie, we forced it to work. So the way the production works is different from a standard premiere project. Uh, it's essentially a group of premiere projects that live under one umbrella, and that umbrella is accessible to multiple editors, similar to how Avid's bin environment works. On Dropbox, we housed the project. We had our working reels, we had our, our cuts history, scenes, music, sound effects, visual effects, all that type of stuff. We would not keep media here. All we would do is keep the project files themselves. So to actually house our media, we all cloned a hard drive. We named it NFN Media and made sure that we kept all our sound effects, all of our music, uh, and all the source files themselves in the same exact directory. This kind of tricked Premiere into thinking that it was working off a shared storage system. So anytime I added sound effects, I would let them know so that when Premiere would boot up on any of our ends, 
it would have the same exact file structure. How did you handle the node process with the directors? The most constructive way we were working was through Frame.io. Communication could be sometimes hard, and so we find it easier for us to get feedback and notes through uh, Frame.io than getting into a conversation that wouldn't get to the point because there's a lot of things to talk about and the person you have in front of you like doesn't isn't in the weeds like you if he's seeing the big picture. There's sometimes issue that he, he doesn't know about but needs to be addressed. So getting that director in front of the Frame.io, we would get more specific notes and also also overall notes and that would be easier for the three of us. Did you ever feel like, man, it would be really good if we would all be in the same room? All the time. After the feature, I cut a documentary with a very experienced editor. I was sitting in a post house. We had rooms right next to each other. And when I was finished on a scene, I could go knock and say, do you have time to look at this? Just being able to jump onto the other editor's computer and be able to talk about it and being physically present is very different. We were like going through Zoom, sharing our, our screen, and it was always a struggle. What would have been ideal in our situation when cutting the movie would, would have been to be able to watch in real time, you know, each other's cuts. But we, we couldn't do that because we didn't have the right solution i found like since we worked remotely all the projects that i've done since then is doing the assembly and maybe like the first or second cut at home so that part is doable at home it's f where we need to create the style of the director's movie and the essentials of, of what he wants to say that we need to be sitting side by side. Because of COVID, we're not like all of our editors. I've worked from home. I know that my, my mentor, Danny Cooper, was working on a TV series remotely from a home. So I think that's something that people are getting used to. I think both are here to stay. I don't know what's going to be the balance between the two of them, but remote editing is here to stay. I have to agree with Erwan. Remote editing is here to stay. And for me, the best solution is actually a hybrid solution. For the past five years, I've cut projects at home and I've cut features where the director was in a different country and just flew over for milestone events like locking the cut. These films I've cut at my place, on my schedule, have some of the most efficient, most creative editing I've ever done. Because being at home enables me to work when I'm in flow state and therefore create better edits. And now there's a great way to bring remote editing to the next level because our sponsor Pixelview lets you not only stream your edit sessions to remote clients for easy collaboration, it also has built-in video and text chat for quick communication. It is simple to set up in just a few minutes. And here's the kicker. You can stream directly from Premiere Pro, Avid and Final Cut without any extra hardware. Just follow their tutorials and you can find out for yourself how strong a tool this is because they now offer a one week trial and 30 30% off your first month with the promo code YouTube. Follow the link in the video description. Working remotely does come with one challenge though. Since you've been working remotely, um, how's that affected your work-life balance? Sometimes on a difficult project, you can find yourself thinking about issues a lot. And especially when like you're working here and then you're sitting over there for the rest of the day. Like there's not a lot of separation when you're trying to figure out a scene, and then when you sleep in the room right there, you're dreaming about that scene. And then you wake up and you come back here and you work on that scene. Mentally, there is little separation. And that can 100% affect relationships because when you know, you're know you trying to have <laughs> dinner with your girlfriend and you're just thinking about the scene, like you're not fully present. As at least opposed to like having that space between you go to an office, you work there, and you come home. You can at least have the train ride to like, you know, listen to a podcast or whatever. and try to separate but no I definitely found that a lot of my time outside of work was spent thinking about this movie while we were working on it. Do you think it's vital to move to LA to have an editing career in feature films or scripted? It really depends on what you want to do, what kind of career you want to do, what kind of movies you want to, you want to cut. But if you are dreaming about making it big, yeah, definitely, because no one can go without LA if you want to, to cut these movies that everybody has seen and everybody knows the title of. But you could, you should be thinking and you should be cutting like indie movies because there's a lot to, to take and you could be like very much happy all your life cutting indie movies. As long as you're not looking to cut for Marvel or like enormous action movies, you couldn't find work in, in a lot of places. You don't have to live in Hollywood to be an editor. You can edit anywhere in the world. 
directors and producers are looking for editors in real every movies day, that are more than ever in the Hollywood. most in the history of planet earth our editors are in desi- are in demand more than they ever have prior we live in a decentralized online world so you know you can you can do this from anywhere and directors and producers are open to hiring from anywhere it's been a success for frankie and i personally on this project on not for nothing our oh yeah film. i recommend it i would do it again so editors you should sign up you will get real opportunities to do real cool projects yeah we did hire people. these three people and we paid them Correct. I don't know if you know that or not. Uh, the boot camp works. You weren't waiting through hundreds of thousands of unqualified entries. Everybody was talented. Everybody was legit. Cutting out the middleman and creating that bridge, breaking down that barrier. Now that you've cut a feature film, how could you improve your editing? What's like the next step creatively? For me, it would be to cut a movie without these two guys like on my on my own and finding if I can ma- make it on my own like can I because I right now I don't know can I cut a movie without Jayvan and John and, So you're and, saying uh, you couldn't have cut this movie on your own I mean I don't know okay, maybe well, maybe I would I wouldn't have been able maybe I, I would have died <laughs> like because <laughs> That's really a, a huge goal in the go to editor course is to get as many people excited about editing and take it seriously and if they are really in it for the right reasons to take their career to the next level. Have you ever wondered what's the best way to break into the film business and make it? Then join me for a free live webinar called Film Industry Secrets. But also what I've learned, I go deep on the three patterns that led me to my wins and I had to learn the hard way through trial and error. The number one thing that gets you hired how to edit creatively what it takes to kickstart your career and ultimately how to leverage up to cutting your dream project while we're at it in that webinar i will lay out a plan that we have in store for our next long form editing challenge seats are completely for free but they are limited so click the link in the description below and secure your spot now this is for aspiring editors experienced editors that want to pivot and also filmmakers who want their films to be edited to be the best they can be click the link register for free and i'll see you live in my 90 minute webinar coming soon thanks for watching and happy editing cheers you guys started a war it's hard to see you in your eyes look